What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta 6 about two weeks after the release of beta 5. Now along with this release, we also got the sixth beta for iPadOS 18.1 and macOS Sequoia 15.1, along with the fourth beta for watchOS 11.1, tvOS 18.1, and visionOS 2.1. But of course in this video, we're focusing primarily on iOS and iPadOS 18.1 beta 6. So you can see the size came in at almost a gigabyte from beta 5. So pretty large size there on my iPhone 16 Pro. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update. Set into our settings, general about 18.1, and we have 22B5069A. So we have an A at the end of the build number, which indicates we are approaching the final release. We should have that before the month ends. And of course, we'll talk about the release date later on. Now, if we go down to the modem firmware, we finally have an update here for the iPhone 16 series. So it's now at 1.11.01. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.1 beta 6? And the first thing has to do with the control center. And take a look at the bottom here because we have two brand new controls that were long requested, especially this one right here. So yes, we now have an airdrop toggle that you can add to the control center and when you tap on that you have the option to change your airdrop settings on the fly and then you also have a satellite toggle where you can turn that on or off as well so if we go ahead in here and go to add control you'll see that if we go under the connectivity section we now have satellite and airdrop right there to complete the entire connectivity platter so before if you wanted to access satellite or airdrop you would have to have the connectivity platter then have to press on that and then press on airdrop but now you have standalone toggles for everything Thing that most people have been wanting for a while with iOS 18. So that's a nice addition. And there's also two new measure controls for the control center as well. So we have one for measure and one for level. So if we go ahead and add both of those right here, you can see what those look like. And of course, just like with the airdrop, you do have different sizes for that as well. So if you want to make these bigger or smaller, you can do that. So here are your four new control center toggles with beta six. And speaking of the control center, if you go into your settings and go to control center and go to to reset control center. If we reset that back to factory, you'll notice a slightly new layout here. Also, the control center itself is a lot more smooth and stable than it was on especially 18.0, but even compared to the previous build of 18.1, it's just smoother now, especially when you go to move icons to the far end right here, you can see they don't move as easily. They don't run away as easily from the other toggle. So I've just noticed a better experience overall with the control center, especially when it comes to moving icons on your control center with beta six, which is a great sign because that's always been pretty bad, honestly, since 18.0 first came out, since iOS 18, the first version. In the notes application, we have a new glyph icon for Apple intelligence in the toolbar. So it now has a pencil through the top right of that icon. And also if you actually do this here, if you go to rewrite, you'll notice a wording change as well. So it used to say retry, now it says rewrite. And also the share feedback used to show up by default and you could not get rid of that. If you swipe down, you can see you can't get rid of share feedback, but now in beta six, it has a little drop down here. So you have a little animation where you can hide the share feedback and it's actually hidden by default, but you can swipe up to be able to share feedback there. There's a new splash screen in the mail application. So this is a very colorful splash screen talking about the Apple intelligence features. So it says priority messages, message summaries, and smart replies all of which we've covered here on the channel already, but we get a new splash screen in beta six. There's also a new splash screen for the app store. So all it says is a more powerful search. So use natural language and descriptive app tags to find what you're looking for more easily. So that is new in beta six as well. Now this update also adds sleep apnea detection. So this was on the iOS 18.0 update, but if you were on the 18.1 betas, we never had that until now with beta six. So it's now been activated and you can find that toggle down here under your watch settings in sleep. And you'll see we have a new toggle there for sleep apnea detection. And keep in mind, if you want to use this, you do need to have an Apple Watch Series 9 and later. There's also a slight change to notifications, which is really nice. So now if you get multiple notifications from the same application, it will show a bubble right here indicating how many notifications you have instead of just showing you know, a summary of all those notifications. So before this only showed up in the uh, summary, the notification summary, but now 
now it shows up for individual cards right here for notifications. I've also noticed that the camera control button seems to be a little bit less sensitive, even though I'm on the most sensitive setting, it still seems to be a little bit less sensitive here with beta six, which is a good thing because it makes it easier to, you know, avoid any accidental taps. So if you have an iPhone 16, let me know if you're experiencing the same, or if this is just placebo me hoping it's actually getting better. Now this update should also include all of the iOS 18.0.1 fixes that we saw in that update late last week. So that includes the touch responsiveness issue, especially if you had an iPhone 16, although it was happening for all devices that should be resolved with this beta. Also the iMessage bug, where if you sent a watch face, if you shared a watch face and then replied to it, that could crash messages. That has been fixed with 18.0.1 and very likely this update as well. And also the camera freezing bug when shooting 4K video should be fixed for the iPhone 16 series. Oh, and of course, Apple did mention improved performance as well. So if your performance wasn't up to par in beta five, it very well could be with beta six. But not everything is perfect because my stickers are still broken here in the emoji keyboard. So if you go into the emoji keyboard, you can see that even over here, I have some blank stickers that just do absolutely nothing. So those are existing stickers. Like I used to have stickers there, but it just shows nothing. It's just blank now. So that was broken in beta five and it's still broken somehow in beta six. Now, as far as performance goes, performance feels a little bit better here on beta six. I'm not sure if it's because of the control center just being so much more fluid than it was in previous versions, but it just feels a little bit better here on beta six, which is usual for an A build. That's typically what we see with those A builds. They do tend to be a little bit more stable. So if you had issues with performance, those could very well be improved here with beta six. In the meantime, I do want to go ahead and run a Geekbench 6 test. So we scored a 3425 on the single core and an 8345 on the multi core. So that's my first real test for Geekbench on this device. So I will be continuing to monitor those results over time. But that seems pretty solid here for a sixth beta. And then in terms of battery life, I would expect battery life to be pretty solid here with beta six, especially if we get those bug fixes that we saw with 18.0.1, the public release last week. So if you had battery drain issues, let me know in a comment down below if beta six resolves those for you after a few days. And of course I will follow up as well on the software in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday to give you an update on the performance and the battery life after using this for the rest of the week. Okay. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So Mark Gurman says that we're going to see iOS 18.1 on October 28th, but you can see we are three weeks away from that and we have an A at the end of the build number. So this could be pretty tricky. So it's very hard to say if we're going to see a beta seven or not, but it seems more likely that we're going to go to an RC from beta six. So we should see an RC as early as next week on the 14th. Now the 14th is a holiday. It is Columbus day. So we might not see it on the 14th itself. It could come later in the week or what Apple could do is skip next week and release an RC on the week of the 21st and then release the public of 18.1 on the 28th. So we could see that, or we could see an RC come later next week and then skip the following week, the week of the 21st, and then get a final release on maybe that Monday, the 28th. So it's hard to say at this point, but it seems like we are going to go from RC to final. We could also have an RC two as well. So just keep that in mind. And of course, keep it locked to the channel and keep it locked to my accounts on X and threads as well to be notified immediately when something gets released. Anyways, that's it for iOS 18.1 beta six. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe for more iOS 18 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.